ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته يا ايها الذين امنوا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Verily all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of the worlds we seek his help and aid and assistance Whomsoever Jalla wa ala guides there is none to lead that individual astray and whoever is left astray then can then can be guided aright I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and final messenger Dear brothers and sisters We have had an event for 3 to 4 weeks around the world as Muslims as a nation And you who are exposed to the English language you who are exposed to the English language and understand the English language and possibly watch the English media and are aware of what happens in the English speaking world What I'm going to talk about today it compels me to talk about before I go on to the main topic of the khutbah. I will briefly discuss four areas, four events, four incidences, four things that have happened and are happening as a reminder for us as Muslims to be aware of what is happening around the world. and then i'll go on to the main body of the khutbah the first issue is one of secularism and the strangeness in how a man who may have more than one wife a man who may have more than one wife this could be seen as a crime But if a man has mistresses there's no problem in this. And I refer to the issue to the situation in France that you may have heard of where even the former head of state had an illegitimate child. And when he was asked what about your illegitimate child who was born out of wedlock he said so what? So a nation which prides itself in secularism and that secularism means what? unlike us as muslims that we believe that how society functions by the divine guidance that only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the authority to legislate which is diametrically opposed to secularism and the custodian of secularism france now has this strange case of trying to revoke the nationality of a person who has more than one wife when he has taken the responsibility of them while at the same time if he had them as mistresses giving illegitimate children there wouldn't be a problem in that society 
So I guess they're very confused on morals and ethics. And his statement was, what did he say, this, this brother of ours? What did he say? He said, if you can have your citizenship taken away for having mistresses, there are a lot of Frenchmen who will have their citizenship taken away. And then we have the issue of the niqab and various legislative actions being taken to ban the niqab. Even though when you look at the whole demographics, it's a relatively small number of sisters who are wearing that niqab. And then you have the whole issue of Muslims starting to become shaky, not grounded firmly upon our true scholarship. Oh, should she wear? Oh, niqab. Because it's niqab today. What will it be tomorrow? And then we have the Pope and the Murphy Commission. And you see, the reason why I raise this is for us to be looking at how, how is it that so many things happen, yet as Muslims we are the ones who are made fun of and ridiculed and referred to as backward and cartoons made, whether on the television or whether in the newspapers to this day being made about our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Pope and the report that showed this disease and abuse of children spanning decades of an organization that claims to have divine, divine leadership. Six decades of a church protecting these perpetrators these sick individuals violating the rights of innocent children. And in one case, where over 200 deaf boys were systematically abused. You see, in Islam, alhamdulillah, we don't have this situation where we feel that there is an imam who's infallible. We don't have this situation where we make the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation. Because those individuals from the Catholic Church who abused and violated those children and do to this day systematically, institutionally covering up, those are the very people who claim to have divine guidance. They are the people that the, that the average man comes to confess to. They are the people that baptize their children. And if I baptize you, you will go to heaven. Those individuals who claimed to have that right are the ones who carried out these heinous crimes. But Islam, alhamdulillah, on the other hand, the Imam is the one who has the best recitation of the Qur'an, who has the best memorization of the Qur'an, is the one who has the best ilm and the most ilm. And that's how he is chosen to lead the, pe the people. We have no centralized control, no individual that we say is beyond the law or above the law so that they can abuse their positions. We don't have a cult like the Aga Khan and the Ismailis, for example. We have dear brothers and sisters, like the Kaaba is our central point of worship, where millions upon millions of us do tawaf throughout the year and pray towards. In the same way, it is the Quran that we have, which is the central legis legislative thing or body in our Iman and Deen. This is the timeless word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that will not change and is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just to reiterate on this issue, dear brothers and sisters, that our deen is not based on popes or special imams who hide these sicknesses and illnesses in their heart. But we have a clear scholarship Recorded in history, which goes back to the chain and chains and chains going back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we had the recent and my final point, the recent issue of the cartoon.
Whether it be in newspapers, whether it be in children's cartoons or mocking cartoons. You see, we as Muslims, we don't draw the Prophet Muhammad We don't depict an image of Rasulullah for the very reason that we don't fall into the trap that the Christians have done. That they end up worshipping Jesus instead of Allah. <coughs> and yes, you see, when you hear these things in the news, whether it's the niqab, whether it's the abuse by the Pope and his support and cover up, whether it's all of these issues that take place, it should ignite something in our hearts. That as a Muslim, I should know where my deen stands on these issues. As a Muslim, I should see, look at the false methods and techniques people have used because they have, tried, have chosen to take a path other than Islam. And yes, we love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he is an amazing Prophet of Allah. He is a gift to mankind. So what do they do? To, cattle, to, to, to rattle the cages of Muslims, they do a cartoon and they mock. And they do it in the name of freedom of speech. They do it in the name of freedom of speech and intellectual progression. What's the intellectual progression and the freedom of speech in abusing and ridiculing and mocking an individual beloved to so many people on this planet? And it is so true. The words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who said, and this is how it starts, right? They joke, they make fun. They make fun of certain characteristics of the Muslims in the media. Oh, they're like this, or they wear this, or they do this. Their Prophet is like this. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he said, Everything has a beginning. And hostility, tension. Hostility begins with joking. Hostility begins with joking. Dear brothers and sisters, I mention these points like I said to you that I feel compelled to speak about. Because as Muslims, we should be aware of what is happening around us and what is happening to our brothers and sisters. However, even though those incidences should ignite something in our heart, whether it be that we research the topic, whether it be that we want to see, that we want to defend our Muslims. The heart, as has been said many, many times, is an important area of a Muslim. Because the heart has actions as well. You know how important the heart is? That you could be doing an action, and that action could be raised so high, based on the condition of your heart. And that is one area, for example, near your intention. You could be doing salah, but with the wrong intention, that salah is not going to take you anywhere. But if you did that salah, Lillahi Jalla wa ala, you wore clothes to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's Yawmul Jum'ah, you wanted to have a shower, you did ghusl, you cut your nails, you put an atar, you came to Jum'ah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the niyyah to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That action is raised because your niyyah is correct, your intention is correct, an action of the heart. And in the same way, actions of the heart, we have illnesses of the heart. And like any illness of the heart, like any illness, for example, it has, it can grow. If you don't take the right medicine, it can grow. If you don't deal with it, it can become bigger. Some people are more ill than others. And one of these illnesses that I will talk about today is the issue of hasad, which is envy, which is different to jealousy. Envy or hasad, as described in the Quran in various ahadith, as described in our book preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, as preserved by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his teachings. Hasad is when you want something somebody else has, but you don't want that person to have it. 
Jealousy is something different. Jealousy is something that you have, that Allah has given you, and you want to protect it. Like, like, like the famous jealousy of the wife for her husband. That's her husband. She feels jealous because that's her husband. She has him and she wants to keep him. That's jealousy. But envy is when you want something somebody else has and you don't want him to have it. And this creeps into the hearts of Muslims. The Prophet Muhammad said, None of you truly believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. This is a hadith. We've heard this many times. At the same time, the Prophet Muhammad has also said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, So whoever desires to remove himself from the fire and enter Jannah, such that death overcomes him while he is a believer in Allah in the last day, then let him treat the people. Let him treat the people in a manner in which he wishes to be treated. Do unto others as you want to be done upon yourself. Desiring good for other people isn't easy. And doesn't come about unless you have cleansed your heart and reflected on the way that you think and addressed the issues that you have in your heart. This evil sickness of envy, dear brothers and sisters, is something that a Muslim should be aware of, both in its definition and how he views other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah An Nisa, He says, Or do they envy people? Or do they envy people for what Allah has given them of His bounty? We have indeed already given the family of Ibrahim the book and the wisdom and conferred upon him a great kingdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this word hasad in the Quran when Jalla wa ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ود كثير من أهل الكتاب لو يردونكم من بعد إيمانكم كفارا حسدا من عند أنفسهم من بعد ما تبين لهم الحق فاعفوا وصفه حتى يأتي الله بأمره إن الله على كل شيء قدير Many of the people of the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, Wish that if they could turn you back to kufr, wish that they could turn you back to disbelief after you have believed, out of envy, out of hasad, even after the truth has been made clear to them. An example of the hasad that the people of Ahl al Kitab have, knowing that we have the truth. You see, it's like there's another, there's another mentality, right? If I don't have it, why should he have it? He's the same as me. And you see this jealousy, this, uh, uh, this envy, this hasad, takes place mostly in people who are similar. From the same language, from the same caste, from the same nationality, from the same level of education. How did he get it? And I didn't get it. And then when you don't get it, the, sin, the disease grows further. I don't want him to have it because I don't have it. A disease that grows. It's the characteristics of the munafiqeen, of the hypocrites, the brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِن تَمْسَسْكُمْ حَسْنَةٌ تَسُؤْهُمْ وَإِن تُسِبُكُمْ سَيِّئَةٌ يَفْرَحُوا بِهَا وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيطٌ If some good should touch you, if something good should happen to you, it distresses them. But if some evil should happen to you, they are happy and rejoice. And if you remain patient and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their plots will not harm you. Indeed, Allah encompasses all that they do. And there are various incidences of hasad, this disease of hasad in, 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 in the true world history. When I refer to world history, I always refer to Tuqassus al-Anbiya, for that is the true world history. And we have the story of Hasid with the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, the, the sons of Ya'qub alayhi salam, that you should be all be familiar with. When they said that our father loves Binyamin and Yusuf more than he loves us, and this envy, this Hasid grew to the level where they said, no, let's kill our brother. 
And similarly, shaitan, similarly, shaitan had this envy for Adam salam, our forefather. When he said, and when your Lord said to the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and when your Lord said to the angels, I will create a human being out of clay from an altered black smooth mud. So when I have fashioned him and breathed into him, the soul which I created for him, then fall down to him in sujood. He ordered those around to fall down in sujood. So the angels did sujood, prostrated all of them together except Iblis, except Shaitan. He refused to be with those who prostrated. And, and Allah said, O oh, Iblis, O oh, Shaitan, why is it that you are not with those who prostrate? Why are you not with those who do sujood? He said, never would I prostrate myself to a human whom you have created out of clay from an altered black smooth mud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then, get out of here, for indeed you are an outcast, and certainly upon you is the curse until the day of recompense. Hasad, that this was this creation was given this maqam, and I wasn't given this maqam. And then we have the two stories of the first murder in the history of the world, which also has the basis of hasad. Driven by this illness, the two sons of Adam السلام, one of them envied his brother because Allah accepted his sacrifice and it didn't accept his. And we know the story in the Quran which is referred to in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayahs number 27 to 31. So the bad consequences of hasad, dear brothers and sisters, are ones that cause a splitting between relationships. And you find people obsessed with somebody else's business. Always thinking about what X man has, what Y man has, what my neighbor has, what my other people have, and never reflecting upon all the blessings and the ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And you find these people consumed, angry with society, that I was done a bad deal. And when someone talks like this and thinks like this, they are treading a very dangerous path. Why? Because now they begin to question the Decision by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon your qadr. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'mineen. Fastaghfiru wa innahu ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasul al-kareem. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ila yawm al-deen. So you become resentful, resentful of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you feel you have been cheated. Why did this? Why did Allah give this person so much wealth and not me? Why did he have good health and I have bad health? Why does he get this job and I didn't get that job? Thoughts and waswas from shaitan to create havoc and chaos in the hearts and the minds of the Muslims. So you cannot feel tranquil. You will never feel at peace. You will never feel. You see, Ridha bi qadrillah is such a ni'mah. It's such a gift. You know, the ulama, they always speak about this issue of, you know, this tranquility which Islam has given us, they, nobody can take. Because it's in you, it's in your heart, when you understand what you are doing on this planet, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following His commandments, staying away from the haram, to please Allah, because you know that the goal is Jannah. That you know that you will have tranquility in your heart, you will have stability in your heart, test upon test, you will face things you will see, but the tranquility stays, because your iman is strong. Because you read the Quran and you understood it. You knew about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You knew about our history. This is how our Iman has to be preserved and kept strong. <coughs> but instead, you know, if we looked at the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he advise us to do? He said, it is upon mankind. The ruling, the issue is it is upon human beings to look to those who are below them. For this will make you recognize the blessings that you have. The Prophet ﷺ said, Look to those who are below you, and do not look to those who are above you. Because it is more appropriate, more correct, that you do not belittle the blessings that you have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So no matter what mankind acquires in this worldly life, none of it really matters in the least when it's compared to the ni'mah and the gift of Iman and Islam that Allah has given us. And my final two points before I close the khutbah, dear brothers and sisters. This resentment is referred to in the Quran. أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكْ نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضُهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْدٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضٍ سُخْرِيَّةٍ وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, do they, dis do they distribute the mercy of your Lord? It is we who appropriate their livelihood in this world. And we have raised some of them above others in degrees so that they may make use of one another for service. But the mercy of your Lord is better than whatever they accumulate. Dear brothers and sisters, hasad is a disease and like any disease, we have to take means to protect it. Both from making it, both from the individual being a source of envy to confront those Bad and evil thoughts, while at the same time protecting yourself from the envy of others. We read, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ A surah you probably memorized when you were five or six years old. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak. مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ From the evil that has been created. And from the evil of the darkness when it settles. And from the evil of those who blow on knots, and from the evil of the envier, from the one who has hasad when he envies. And the Prophet ﷺ has reported by hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha who said, if the Messenger of Allah ﷺ used to complain of something, he would complain of something, Jibreel ﷺ used to recite to him the following ruqiyah, the following recitation. In the name of Allah, may He heal you. From the envy ail from the uh, from every ailment, may he cure you from the evil of the envier when he envies, and from the influence of the eye, from the ayn. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a sickness in the soul that we must address. Take some time out to do muraqaba to nafsi. You know, to take maybe once a week just to sit down in a corner of your house, away from your children, away from your wife, away from the internet, to switch off the phone. To be on your own just for 15 minutes and ask yourself, what has my niya been? What have I done to please Allah this week? How have I behaved this week? Do I have hasad? Do I have this in my heart? To confront these areas in a Muslim's life. You know, it's something that we as human beings will fall into, but if we don't keep a check on this disease, it will grow. As Al-Hassan Al-Basri rahimahullah has said, Can a believer be envied? Sorry. It was said to Hassan Al-Basri, Can a believer be envied? And he replied, What has made you forget Yusuf and his brothers? Have you no father? Did you understand? But you should keep this envy that if anybody even feels this envy that, Oh, somebody's got something and you want it. That even if you feel this, control it. Don't say anything. Don't try to suppress those emotions. For you will, you cannot be harmed by that which you did not act, that with which you did not act upon in speech or action. And my last and final point before I close today, dear brothers and sisters, you know this characteristic of envy is something frowned upon in almost every culture and religion. It's a bad characteristic to want something somebody else has. You want it without him having it. Or if he doesn't have it, none of us should have it. It's frowned upon in all societies and cultures and customs. However, Alhamdulillah, in our balanced deen, there is a form of hasad which is often referred to as like ghitta in Arabic. There's a form of envy which is permissible. And that, and, that, and that envy which is described very clearly in a hadith of Rasulullah when he said, as reported by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, 
He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no envy, la hasada. There's no envy except in two cases. A person to whom Allah has granted wisdom and he rules by this and teaches it to the people, i.e. the Quran. And a person to whom Allah has granted wealth and property, along with this, the power to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one hadith. In another ruwaya, the characteristics are, in, in, in the words of Ibn Mas'ud, a person to whom Allah has given the Quran and he recites it night and day, and a person to whom Allah has granted wealth and property and he gives it in charity night and day. And the beauty of this is, this is not something unreachable for us as human beings. Particularly one of them, it's not something that we cannot attain. It's something that you can excel in. To learn the book of Allah, to recite the book of Allah, is not something somebody can have and you won't have. It's accessible for us. It's possible for us to have this thing, which there is, no, which, which there is praiseworthy envy for. To compete to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, I have raised this issue as this issue of hasad was the khutbah I heard last Friday in our local masjid. And it was a good reminder to myself, for, first and foremost, and I wanted to share this with you, that we should reflect upon the state of our heart, reflect upon the diseases and be aware that such diseases exist. That we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having tried our best on this planet to please Him. Not a 50-50 situation, not a half-baked situation. Not a situation when some, 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 something said in the media, or we are weak in our knowledge of Islam, and we become shaky. We have to look to the future. We want our children to be Muslims. We have to safeguard our Iman. We have to protect our Iman. We have to know the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah ta'ala bi'idhnillah, such that we gain eternal success in the hereafter. Allahumma unsur Islam wal muslimin. اللهم انصر إخواننا المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم أربت على قلوبهم وثبت أقدامهم وتقبل شهدائهم اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك الصالحين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لمن حضر هذه الجمعة ووالديه وافتح للموعد قلبه وأذني واغفر لنا وله يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة